I'm Ulrike Ottinger, a filmmaker, and uh, I have done a lot of fiction films, but also very unusual documentaries, also long ones, but also short ones. Uh, many of them in Asian countries, but I have also done here in Berlin three fiction films called the Berlin Trilogy. And uh, in the next time, I think I would wish to do something here again to look at the changes uh, in the city. Uh, between the time when I made the Berlin Trilogy in 79 and in 83. And uh, I think this could be very interesting for me. And now I have my last film, who is a kind of portrait of mine when I was a young woman in Paris. But it is also a portrait of the city from the 60s in Paris and the situation of intellectuals and artists and uh, the things they were dealing with and influenced them. Ich war 20 Jahre jung und mit dem festen Plan, eine große Künstlerin zu werden, nach Paris gekommen. In meiner Euphorie wollte ich alles Erlebte sofort künstlerisch umsetzen. Die Frage war, wie? Genau diese Frage stelle ich mir jetzt gut 50 Jahre später. Wie mache ich einen Film aus der Perspektive einer sehr jungen Künstlerin, an die ich mich erinnere, mit der Erfahrung einer älteren Künstlerin, die ich jetzt bin? In Paris folgte ich den Spuren meiner Heldinnen und Helden und wo immer ich sie fand, werden sie in diesem Film erscheinen. Hi, welcome to the Teddy Award. My name is Jean-Bert Bobak and we are discussing the film Paris Telegrams by Ulrike Ottinger. Hi, welcome to the Teddy Award. Welcome to the festival. Hello. It's very lovely to have you here. Um, let's talk about Paris Calligrams first. Um, this is your new film that premieres at the, at the Berlinale. Um, you take a very interesting position in this film. Um, you, it's kind of a memory exercise in many ways of remembering the 1960s in Paris, your time there as an artist. Uh, from the perspective of today, but by remembering the young artist who started out there. Can you explain a bit about this very particular position that you take? Yeah, in the film? yeah. Indeed, this was a very complicated uh, um, idea because uh, when you remember, uh, uh, of course, I remember myself as a very young uh, woman coming to Paris and to be in a way also overwhelmed by everything. And uh, of course I'm doing the film now, yeah, uh, with all the experiences I have. So it was always a little bit of balance uh, to, uh, uh, to get this uh, uh, astonishment what I had at this time. Uh, in the film and at the same time uh, to think about uh, um, with all the uh, experience I have today uh, back on this time. And uh, so I decided uh, to do this kind of flannery uh, like in a way as uh, Benjamin uh, uh, used it in his uh, Passagen work and uh, through Berlin and to get inspired by everything what I saw and uh, which uh, things I was confronted at that time. And to start uh, with it, I made a research and I saw in the different archives in Paris about 400, 500 films, all kind of films. 
uh, fiction films, documentaries, uh, news uh, reels, everything, yeah. yeah, quite everything. And uh, this was uh, uh, for me uh, to get a kind of montage or mosaic from all these different uh, uh, elements to create this time uh, again, but with the view of our time and all the changes in society, in politics, we face today. And I found it very interesting to compare it. And because only if you compare, you uh, can see the difference. You need to do positions to see the difference. Yeah. And it's, as, as you mentioned, it's very interesting because, of course, the film gives your personal account, um, through your personal experiences there, but it's a very vivid portrayal of all the political and social upheavals and changes yeah. that were so particular to the 1960s yeah. Yeah. and that have a very mm. strong effect up until today. Of course, yeah. So can you talk a bit about this historical aspect? Of yeah, the yeah. You know, at that time in Paris, it was uh, a time of a, a lot of changes. Yeah, uh, France uh, had to face uh, um, his long history of uh, colonial history. Yeah and who was quite strong yeah, in France because the whole society was involved yeah, in this. Yeah. And uh, if you... And even uh, the, um, the conflict in Vietnam, yeah, uh, you know, this were the French who uh, had uh, lost this uh, battle yeah, yeah, in DNB and Fu. Yeah. And after this, you know, uh, the Americans took over. And this was not discussed among the young people at that time in Paris. But historically, this was uh, a case. Yeah. Of course, the French uh, officials were still there, and also when the Americans were there to help the Americans to get along because they know better the situation there. Yeah. But this was something who was I wouldn't say uh, some people, of course, who had a bigger knowledge discussed it, but in general not. Um, uh, most of the yeah. students didn't. Yeah. So this was something. Then there was the uh, Algerian uh, war just ended and the uh, freedom is uh, Algerian. Algeria uh, and the independence uh, uh, was uh, affected at that time and a lot of uh, Algeria French people were coming uh, to France yeah, and didn't know where to go. So it was a very difficult time. And then my artistic friends, you know, all the men had to fight in the Algerian war. There was no chance to go away. And if you did it, yeah, then you had to face terrible things when you went back to France. What happened in one case of one of my friends who was uh, a really a great artistic friendship. I had this uh, a, a French artist and we worked a lot together, had sometimes also an atelier together. And uh, so he, in a way, was uh, uh, destroyed by his experiences. Yeah. Yeah. And so all these um, things that were happening at that time uh, had a um, big influence on uh, our artistic work. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Also in the visual arts and in literature, in general in France. And so uh, it was highly discussed, yeah. and uh, we discussed it every day. All these problems had an unbelievable presence also in our life and in our artistic work. Yeah. But that also shows through the film, because mm. it, art really becomes 
a form of revolt and a form and, and maybe even a tool for for social change. Yeah. And this is something that uh, that characterizes your your artistic journey from beginning up till sure. today. Sure. Yeah. 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 That was very interesting to see. Um, the film also touches upon. Um, queer resonances and queer lives in 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 that time, particularly uh, when you discuss in in that little chapter about about the Parisian yeah, nightlife. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us a bit about about that time, the yeah, queer yeah, life in, yeah, in 1960s yeah. Paris? Of course, it was for me very fascinating to go as a young woman to Paris because things were possible who were not possible before. Yeah. You had these bars and uh, so you could go there. And at that time in Germany, you know, it was the uh, 50s of the Adenauer era who were quite, um, yeah, how should I put it, you know, Everything was, uh, as we say in Germany, uh, put under the carpet. Right. Yeah. And it was also a big time of camouflage, of uh, Nazi time, and everybody was, uh, um, you know, pretended not to be, but wasn't, of course, not the case. And there was still, you know, the culture in Germany was so run down, yeah. And uh, so, when you were young in the South, you had uh, contact with uh, French culture. And this was the future. You want just to left all the terrible things behind and to go to, to uh, Paris, yeah. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, this was for me uh, very interesting. You know, also the French uh, uh, bourgeoisie was very conservative, but nevertheless, yeah, in uh, sexual things, they were much more uh, free, yeah. yeah, as in Germany at that time. So this was very interesting for me. And uh, uh, I remember what was for me artistic an uh, interesting uh, uh, thing at uh, um, uh, Mr. Uh, I don't remember his first name, Dreyfus, or Dreyfus was his name, and he was a great uh, uh, performer, but it was, you know, not like in one of his uh, drag uh, comedies, it was really something artistically interesting, yeah, what he made. And uh, his real name was uh, 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 Diamondstein, and um, he um, he was really a, a, a great performer. Yeah, he was uh, a fantastic Jean Claude Dreyfus. Yeah, now I remember. Uh, and uh, this was fascinating to see this kind of cabaret uh, who had really something. Uh, Unusual, also artistically, aesthetically, yeah. you know, and uh, he was a great performer. So uh, we went there a lot, and of course uh, uh, bars for uh, uh, women and so. This is, uh, and um, after some time I went uh, to go dance uh, every night. You went out at midnight and went back at four in the morning. This is how the song uh, Il est cinq heures, Paris se veille. Uh, it is five um, in the morning and uh, Paris start to become to life uh, oh, yeah. again. Yeah. So it was a famous song at the time who was playing at the radio every morning at uh, five o'clock. Yeah. In I think it was uh, France Inter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, radio station. At that time the radio was very important, yeah, yeah there was not so much television, yeah, and so the uh, radio was very uh, important, so they played it every morning. This yeah. is how the film starts yeah. with this song, yeah. 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 So. You're also a former Taddy winner, you, you yeah. received a mm -hmm. special Taddy. Mm -hmm. um, what does it mean to you to be, to be recognized as as um, 
as a filmmaker prominent for the queer community. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what does this mean to you? Yeah. That's a difficult uh, question. Uh, because you know this is one part of mine, of but not yeah. everything. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's more complex. And I think what is interesting, this is that you work with um, uh, experiences at an outsider, what is at least in our country is no more yeah. the problem. Yeah, and of course there are other countries so it is a big problem. But I remember this time, yeah, and then the mepri, yeah, yeah. Uh, of this time. And uh, so you work with these experiences, but I wouldn't not uh, uh, um, not they, this is my identity is composed from many things yeah. Yeah. and uh, you know to be uh, uh, gay or uh, lesbian or to be Jewish or to be a member of an uh, other minority uh, doesn't makes you, uh, uh, um, it isn't, if you work with it, it is an advantage in your artistic uh, life. But if you don't work uh, with it, I, I think it's not so interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so you're receiving this year the, the Berlinale ca Camera, huh? um, which is awarded to people who did a lot for, for filmmaking mm. in general and who mm. have a we have a special connection, mm. a very supportive and friendly relationship mm. with the Berlinale. So can you talk a bit about your relationship yeah. with this yeah. film festival? But, but I understood uh, how it was explained to me also uh, by the um, uh, 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 by uh, Carlo Chatrian and Maria Dresenbeck uh, that it is like a life achievement award yeah, for my uh, image language in uh, film in filmmaking, yeah. and, uh, and this is what I'm doing. Of course, in the last film, the last film is an exception, yeah, there, uh, uh, because it's composed uh, 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 mainly from uh, documents, yeah. yeah, but in other films, yeah, my, yeah. I'm doing also the camera, my oh, yes. uh, image language is, uh, I tried like in the Baroque time, yeah, uh, I like to explain a lot of things uh, with images, yeah, and less with words, yeah, and therefore I understood this as a prize for this, uh, ability to yeah, make this kind of film. Yes, yeah, what you did for, for yeah. filmmaking. Yeah. 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 And how is your how, how do you see because you have a long history in this film festival. Yeah. You, you yeah. many of your films yeah. uh, played here. Yeah. Um, how how do you how do you see the Berlinale? Yeah. And what did it play? In, in your career? Uh, you know, when I uh, arrived in the 73, uh, I uh, could show my first film, and it was not at the Berlinale, it was in a small cinema who was called Notausgang. It was, uh, uh, it was no more existing in Schöneberg. And uh, only some friends were coming, and some at that time, you know, the uh, Berlin was very close and it was a, a community uh, uh, of uh, uh, film lovers, yeah. yeah. So uh, it was a little bit different. And uh, so Berlin, of course, has uh, uh, enormously uh, changed, yeah, fortunately. Yeah, it's no more so close, it's much more international. Yeah. Yeah. At that time, the city was white, completely white, yeah. And now we uh, have a more international city, fortunately. And uh, this is uh, what I'm thinking much more uh, interesting. And uh, the changes in the um, 
Berlinale um, there is a little bit uh, less um, decor now yeah. Yeah. and uh, the films um, are becoming more important and the discussion about films, about the themes, about aesthetic, film aesthetic, film, uh, all this is becoming now uh, uh, more important and I think this is a very good development yeah. and uh, because uh, you know all this uh, red uh, uh, carpet uh, thing uh, uh, was in the past a little bit uh, you know, also, I, I didn't like how uh, women presented these great actresses, yeah. presented themselves, yeah. You need as an actress an unbelievable personality to make it in style yes. over the red carpet, yeah. yeah. And the younger sometimes don't have this yeah. ability, and then I, I think it is, um, I don't like it so much. Yeah. So I can tell you, I remember the situation when I went over the red carpet with Delphine Zerich. She is a lady and it was unbelievably, um, it was also sexy, yeah, but in style, you know, it was something, yeah. And this is something I'm uh, uh, missing a little bit on the red carpet, you know. Actors, actresses have to be shown, yeah, and to be fantastic and to have. Um, uh, uh, but then you need a, a personal body language, yeah, to to stand it. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah, and this is often missing, and then it becomes something a little bit. Yeah, I don't like so much. Yeah, it's it had nothing to do yeah. with aesthetic, with yeah. artistic things yeah. also. Yeah. Which always interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Uri Kautinger, thank you so much for the interview. Yeah. In the name of the Tadio, we congratulate you on, on the Berlin you. camera mm. and and thank you for all the wonderful movies yeah. that we've seen from you. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah.